What is going on, beautiful people of the world? Today we are back with another Tales Hurt to Healing Tales of Triumph episode, and we are going to be following on from not last week, week before. So there was a bit of an interim. I was going to do grounding and emotional work back to back. However, I thought about building resilience was something that's very, very key, something I speak about all the time, but never actually tell you how to do it. And so that's what we discussed in the last week's video. So this week is about grounding and emotional work. So we've covered emotions and that realm of things. And now we're going to be going into grounding yourself, practical, physical things that you can do to actually ground yourself and help with your emotional work. So what is grounding? So grounding in the best way I can describe it from my personal experience is when you are in a heightened f- stage of fight or flight and you feel like your emotions are taking over and you are not in control of yourself and your emotions and you feel like you're in a room with people possibly or you might even be in a room with yourself and you are unable to control the way that you react to certain stimulus so example for me with my whole lasagna thing it's very i can't control what other people are going to order at a, at a dinner table however i know what triggers me and it is about ex- you know, and then because i'm very used to this now i can literally feel myself be engaged and my fight or flight mechanisms turn on and therefore when my fight or flight mechanism is then engaged i then want to essentially run away from the situation, but I know that I can't run away from that situation. So it's about then what do I do during that time to be able to be able to bring myself back down to a much calmer version of myself so that I'm not in that heightened fight or flight stage. So there is a number of different ways that this can be done. Now, as I preach about mind and body, how the connection is so real and so important that you manage both, Having physical exercise on a regular basis does manage your fight or flight hormones a lot better because it manages every aspect of your physical health better. By going to the gym regularly, whatever kind of gym workout that may be, if you go to the gym more regularly, then you will be able to manage your fight or flight hormones better. It's just as simple as that. So once you have managed your fight or flight hormones better through a physical realm in terms of going to the gym and experiencing Again, it's being uncomfortably comfortable or putting yourself in an uncomfortable situation comfortably. Okay, it's the best way I can describe it. So a lot of people have high anxieties about going to the gym and about doing those kinds of things. And that's completely fair enough. But that makes you uncomfortable. So by putting yourself in an uncomfortable position, going to the gym, you're doing it safely. And you're doing it with anything. If you go to a friend, you're doing it more comfortably. That makes friends. If, If that makes sense. So you're doing an uncomfortable thing comfortably. And therefore, you will then build more. That will help you build resilience. That will help you manage your stress hormones better. The more times you put yourself in an uncomfortable position comfortably is the more times you will be able to deal with your stress easier. Now, practical tools and techniques in order to be able to ground yourself. So after you've taken care of the physical realm, which obviously happens over a prolonged period of time, you can't just go to the gym or go on run, one run and feel 10 million times better. I mean, yes, you can go on one particular exercise and then feel better about exercise, but you will never feel, you'll never be where you want to be after one exercise. It takes time and time and time and discipline and you know motivation to be able to get up and do the things you don't want to do in order to be able to create a better, well-rounded journey. So another massive tool that I use for a very practical setting is counting colors. Now, counting colors is a very documented thing among a lot of therapists. I believe counting colors to be extremely beneficial because I think from a personal perspective, it allows you to bring yourself back to that room. So this is something that I've mentioned before in one of my previous videos, but to put it into the best perspective possible, if you are at dinner, and you get over in a room with other people and you get triggered for whatever reason it is, that then sends you back to the time when you were going through your abuse. And when you were then going through your abuse, you are then unfortunately back in that time. But actually you're not at that table. And what has happened to you is not happening to you at that time. Even though you've been triggered and you know, flight hormones have kicked in because you know these, one of your five senses has picked up the sub reminds you of that time, does not mean you're in that time and so by looking around the room and counting colors then you are able to bring yourself back to the present 
and not stay in the past, not regress back to when you were 10 years old or where we know whatever it is, you are able to keep yourself in the room that you're in and keep yourself engaged in what you're doing. That's one of the biggest things that's helped me in the past massively counting colors because I have a lot of triggers. I have a lot of things that take me back to times when I was not doing very well at all. And it's very easy to fall back into those states of not doing very well. It is extremely easy to lie to yourself, but essentially just not do the things that you need to do to be able to, in order to continue to progress. However, it is extremely easy to get yourself out of the depressive, anxiety-ridden, traumatic states that you find yourself in. Now, I say this obviously from having gone through years of painstaking therapy, addiction issues, physical and sexual problems, relationship issues, uh, issues, name it, eating issues. So it takes a long time for you to identify what you need to work through, how you need to work through it. But grounding yourself is extremely, again, it's another massive learning curve because you have to find out what works for you. So another thing that works for a lot of people that has worked for me, it doesn't work for me in a grounding situation, but it works for me in terms of a sleep situation and enhancing your sleep will enhance your hormone production and your release of different hormones during different times when they need to be released. So if you have, so lack of sleep is the worst form of torture, it's literally documented um, as the worst form of torture. Because if you have it, if you lack enough sleep, you'll start hearing and you know hallucin hallucinations either through seeing things or hearing things. And there'll be a whole host of different problems that you can have from not sleeping well. Now, in today's society, we just write off a lack of sleep as, you know, oh, it is what it is. But it is really important that you take care of your routine and make sure that you do actually get the sleep that you need to get in order to be the person that you need to be, essentially. Um, make sure that you, by having the sleep, by having better sleep, you not only feel better, move better, are more engaged, burn more calories, perform better at the gym, perform better sexually, perform better physically, perform, you know, relationships take less of a toll. Everything about your life improves when you are well rested. And so in order for me to get really good night sleep, if I'm really struggling, I do a lot of the breathing techniques, deep breathing, like by Wim Hof, fantastic. He recommends you do it in the morning time. I have had massive euphoric experiences from deep breathing techniques and it's something that i know i need to do every morning alongside different like wellness routine is something that is extremely important and it's something that even i struggle doing sometimes because i can't be bothered or i've got a lot of stuff to do in a day and you know or you know you just make excuses to spend 10 20 minutes on the floor stretching or to spend five minutes doing a mobility routine or to spend five, 10 minutes doing some deep breathing techniques like you're spending an hour prioritizing your wellness which is going to set you up for the day so yeah, breathing is something that's proven to reduce stress, something that the doctors recommend reduce stress. It is really good, provided you do it right. You people sometimes just sit there and go, and, you know, much as that is right, that's not, you know, overloading oxygen and you're not prioritizing deep, meaningful breaths. And so you go, going a, doing a guided deep breathing session is something I recommend, something that's been proven to, like I said, reduce stress, enhance sleep, and can help you ground yourself. So if you're in a position where you feel like you're being elevated in terms of your fight or flight, then you need to take yourself away from everything and do your breathing techniques in order to bring yourself down so that you can elevate your heart rate and then you can purposely lower your heart rate so that you can return to a more homeostasis mode. So that's what's worked for me in grounding. It's quite a basic one it's quite simple i things that really genuinely work for me like i say like colors is fantastic so if you're in a room and you feel like you're being elevated you look around the room and count like five things that are blue or you count five things that are pink and what that does is that that enables you to be more in the room and less back in your stuck in your mind stuck in those thoughts allow you to return to the conversation another thing that i found the best is having friends and family that understand what you've been through and why you've been through it that is like one of the biggest things because then even when you are triggered like people see that you've been triggered and then they try and engage with you in the present like i cannot express to you how much that means to me to know that my friends my partner my family 
you know, people that I've told about what I've been through and people that know in, in large detail about what happened, know that when you when something is said, something is done, and you are immediately start to dissociate. And it's very obvious, you know, anybody that's been through anything, so anybody that does dissociate often, like it's not you're covering up just because you're looking at someone's forehead or something like it's obvious you're dissociating in a conversation and it's quite nice when someone says you're dissociating you want to come back to the present and you're just a bit like oh because sometimes you don't even realize that you're doing it and i feel like to really be able to have those people surround you and be able to ground you yourself is extremely important for your well-being if you have people that just simply don't care and just let you wander off in your own mind then I've found that that's quite, I don't want to say like, just some, it's just people I don't want to be around. And again, it's down to people having their own self-awareness. And a lot of people don't have self-awareness about their mental health and about the things that they need to do and about the mental state that you can be in or they can be in. And I feel like because of that fact, it is very annoying. I want to say annoying, but it is very like, no, I would say annoying. It is annoying. You know, you feel like you can't speak, like you cannot speak like, Hard, right going through physical sexual abuse indescribably hard what i find harder myself is going through friendships and relationships where you feel like you can't tell someone about it because you'll be judged for it that's why i do what i do and i help because i feel like you should never worry about being judged for it and you do subconsciously i do i worry all the time about you know, close friends i know that they probably wouldn't but it's you know you want to see, and how do you have that conversation anyway how do you sit down and have the conversation about abuse it doesn't never comes up in conversation does it ever you know make comments on the fly like i had um one of the people that i work with in the gym turned around to me the other day and he goes oh yeah we had this client sign up and then ask for a refund immediately because he said that he didn't want to come through to the gym because of what he'd been through as a child and he said and i was like, oh okay interesting and then the guy at the gym said oh yeah but you can't use what happened you can't use what happened at your childhood to justify what you're not doing now and i was a bit like well yeah i see your perspective i can also he see his perspective because at the end of the day if you have been through a lot as a child it is very hard and it is you know many people understand and it is, but at the same time, like I've always said, I don't think you should let it hold you back in life. I think it's a tool to be actually be used to push you forward in life above people who haven't been through anything. Uh, where I think we should look at it, I don't think we should look at it as something that holds us back, but actually something that pushes us forward and therefore allows you to do more than the average person. So, yeah, but then, you know, as a weapon to, not, to justify not doing something, I think is wrong. But at the same time, by, you know, being able to have your friends to speak to, about these situations i feel is also you know very, very hard and then what the reason i've said this right they've gone on this very big tangent the reason i've said that is because if you are in a room full of people who understand what you're going through and have or understand what you've been through subsequently what you're going through and someone says something offhand that they don't realize triggers you but they notice that you've been triggered or they know it's a trigger but they said it by accident right for example my my best friends has changed his name right because he associates his birth name from his parents with the old version of himself that is dead right that he's done some terrible things that he doesn't want to be associated with anymore right totally understand that he now wants to be called by his new name right now because i've called him this name for the past like two years right it's very hard for me to call him by his new name because I've called him by that name for so long, right? So it always comes up that I call him by his old name. And I apologize for it because I understand that, you know, associates that with the old past of himself and he wants to be now associated with a new version of himself that he is like moving forward and doing better things with. Cool. Understand that. And I understand that when I call him by his old name, I can see it in his eyes that he gets triggered and I have to want to apologize and I want to say, you know, blah, blah, I understand. So there's that perspective. Now, he did the same thing with me and you know, I was triggered and that happens because we've been friends for so long. We do it by accident and we don't even realize, but what we do is we're able to identify that someone's been triggered by something and play it off and move on and have a laugh about it. Right. So that we then don't get upset by it. 
Whereas if you're in a room full of people who don't understand what you've been through or have no idea what you've gone through and they say something that triggers you and then they don't realize that they've triggered you, but you've now been triggered, it's a bit like, well, I've just now got to sit here with my thoughts and my emotions and try and bring myself back to the room. And so that's when your grounding and emotional work comes into play because I understand you're not going to want to tell everybody about what you've been through. So you then have to turn around and say, okay, I've now... I now need to count the colors in the room or I need to go out and do some deep breathing or I need to you know, do whatever I need to do to bring myself back into this room. And everybody has a different thing that they need to do, right? For like periods of my life, when I was younger, probably a lot when I was younger, I used to carry little books around with me so I could like write down in these little books as things would happen, right? Almost like a diary on the go kind of things, right? That's what I used to do. Um, and I would like love ago. I never realized why I did it. Now I understand why I do it. And then it moved into like meditating. So like it moved into going and have a cigarette by myself, if I'm going to be honest. And then so like if something bad would happen and like I was in a room full of people who like, did, for example, I'd just go and have a cigarette by myself and just relax so that I could just like myself, I could just calm down because by having the cigarette in the first place, it would like make my heart beat faster so that I could almost like hide the, I could almost internally externally match the fight or flight response and then calm myself down for me grounding and emotional work or the grounding specifically is about matching that fight or flight response so you can bring yourself back down that's what i found best and what works the best is you've got to do something that matches that fight or flight response so your fight or flight response kicks in your heart starts beating your heart rate goes up right you start sweating if you do something that matches that on an external scale, start doing push-ups, start doing jumping jacks, start doing like, well, like cigarette, <clears throat> don't go and have a cigarette. <coughs> I take that back. You shouldn't purposely go and smoke, but because that's just bad for your health. But that's what I used to do, right? So, you know, something that's, you know, that to bring yourself back down so that you can elevate your heart rate and then purposely bring your heart rate back down again and bring yourself back down as the current moment. So experiment with different things. This week, see what you what works, see what doesn't work. Um, actually, try your hardest to understand. You know, you'll have a variety, and make sure you write everything down. What you've tried, what you what works, what doesn't work. So you have a variety of different things written down, so that when you're in a panic mode, you can go back to this little book that you're creating, and you're able to actually understand why you've done, done and how you've done. Okay. All right, guys, make sure you give this video a like. Don't forget to subscribe and comment your thoughts down below. Share this with somebody who needs the support and tune in for the next one.